What's up, Salt Strong Nation? We're doing trout on demand, T-O-D. At least we hope we are. Just we have fish not, catching action on demand. Yeah, we have not Could caught anything. anything yet. But we're in an area that we know should hold some trout. And we get this question all the time. All right, it's a tough day, and it has been. Let's be honest, we've been fishing for a while, and it's been pretty tough. What do you do on a tough day? We got super high tide, so it's tough to skip under mangroves. We got a little bit of wind. It's summertime. It's now hot. And we said we're going to go to a trout spot. So talk about this spot while you make a kit. Luke wants to be first. Let's see what's happening here. Yeah, so it's really about this is summertime now, and the water is getting pretty hot. And we know whether it's trout. Oh, oh I just had one. Oh, almost on um, the man. Whereas trout, really all these fish, they, they need some good oxygen. So they need water oh. that's near a pass or near an inlet, really near a channel, moving water, and they need structure. And so this is an area that has pretty deep grass. It must be ladyfish it's or something. It's about three feet deep. There Joe's on. Oh, little trout. Oh, trout on demand. First cast. Yeah. Oh, one followed it up too. So it's about, oh, I just had another hit. So it's and about three, four shooting. feet deep with uh, in the, oh, the actual on, channel on. is right there. So it gets about 15 feet just beyond it. And there's just nice clean water. There we are. There's a double. So we literally just got out here and we doubled in the first couple minutes. So the way over there is the Gulf of Mexico and that water is now coming in. We are almost to the top of the incoming. That water's coming in. And uh, in these fish, this is just a, a, a natural place that these fish will hold into. And there'll be a lot of different species. We can catch a bunch of ladyfish, oh, uh, another, Spanish another mackerel. On. It's back-to-back -back cast there, Lukey. Yeah, Spanish mackerel, um, just a, a wide variety. And, this one's and a little right, bit nicer here. Yeah, that's, that's solid. No, not really. I take that back. Compared to the other one. Just he had a little bit more heart. That's all it was. <laughs> Man, these things are in just, look at this. I don't even see my Slam Shady. Yeah, you better get pliers on that guy. Killed it. But yeah, so this type of fishing, though, it's just a great way to go take kids out fishing, or if you have somebody oh, new who's just not really experienced with lures, this is a great way. Oh, golly, I just got hammered. This is a great way to to just kind of introduce somebody to uh, to fishing. It's, as you've seen here, we've already caught three, four, three, four fish, and it's maybe been five minutes. Um, something bit my tail off. And so I'm just using a little nub and that works great too. All you need is something, you know, within two to four inches that's darting around the grass and there's going to be some that's going to eat it. And uh, the, again, the cool thing is about this, you really know, you don't know what's going to be next. Could be pompano, um, you know, could be Spanish mackerel. Every once in a while a tarpon will come in the mix. Um, just a whole lot of fun. But most importantly, it's just, whoa, it's very rare that you're not going to catch anything. And this is a way, the, the easiest way that I know of to get the closest thing to guaranteed action without having to bother with live bait. So and we don't, do we don't have the troll motor down. I mean, this is, we're just drifting. And uh, we can, every one of these little patches is going to be some grass and probably some fish. Yep. And so this is, and I don't I, know if the camera can pick it off, but there's a grass patch here. There's another one up ahead. And then we're about to drift over into the channel. And once we get out of the grass, that's when we need to change our. Oh, watch out. oh man. Lucky I was nice. I. Oh, they're off. Oh. Dang. Dude, they're just. Can't tearing tell what it up that is. Down there. Oh, I'm on. Oh, I almost. On. If, I, if I really wanted to set the hook, I would have given Joe a gut check there. There we go. JoJo is back on if you're listening. It's a trout. Another Teresa. All right, at least that one didn't inhale it. I feel bad when those things inhale it. Fortunately, I had plier. Always keep pliers on you. Makes it so much better for the fish. I'm gonna come down here and get this little guy. Yeah, so that Slam Shady is crushing it. Joe's has the 2.0 and he's definitely getting more strikes. I'm um, going for the big one. Just I for the record, I've only had one cast without a fish. So it is truly, and uh, I got quarter ounce jig head and you can see this thing's even jacked up here from catching all these trout quarter ounce little trout eye jig head from z-man both of these things which you can buy in our store at fishstrong.com and save 20 percent off as a member so um this is kind of like for me my go-to i always have one rigged up which is slam shitty 2.0 i always have a hundred pack which i believe every series english should own a hundred pack of 2.0 and those trout i Jig heads in the quarter. Ooh, that sounded a little bit better. Uh, oh, lady, that was lady. So yeah, the outside of the flats usually have a little bit bigger trout, but that's also higher chance of ladyfish. Oh, watch, watch your line. And it's uh, come on, hoping this guy would jump off. And this is where a lot of the Spanish mackerel can go to. Get this 
This one slung my, my All right, so, off. you know, we're in the Tampa St. Peter, Luke. How would someone recreate a spot like this? Let's just say Sarasota. Yeah, just find a channel. No. Find, it, find a so channel uh, that has next to a, next to a, gra a big grass flat with, with shallow water that gets close to the channel edge, and there's going to be some fish to be caught. What if... I, would, I, would, I shouldn't say all of them are, but if, if you did this and you picked out three different grass flats that push up to the channel and you drifted them or ideally the troll motor would be easier. But if you, if you did it for at least three of them, at least one of those three, you're going to hold a lot of fish. Not, not all of them will. I'd be lying if I said that, but mo a majority would. It'd be very rare that you can go to three spots like this. And for instance, our members, we'll show you exactly where this is um, in the video down below. But you'll see exactly, you know, exactly the, the type of spot to look for. And it's very rare that there's not going to be fish in more than one. And especially not three. So we're out of the, the channel now. And so we'll just do this without messing with the trolling motor. I'm going to get the big motor. Yeah, we'll just big motor us. up. Hold on, back. Joel. We're and you might even notice, too, like we're not in like some secret spot that is a private waterfront area. There's like one of the busiest boat ramps around right there behind us. We're like, we're a, a driver away from hitting a golf ball to the boat ramp. You can't drive that far, dude. Oh, with a good wind. <laughs> <laughs> Let me use my strong arm. Of a friend of mine. And, uh, <laughs> no, 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 you didn't. <laughs> All right, while we're moving here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a new Slim Shady, put this one in my yeah. recycle pocket and remember, Folks, if you put Slam Shady covered in Dr. Juice in your pocket, remember to take it out before you wash your clothes. Ask me how I know. Yeah, and so uh, my line, that ladyfish just wrecked my line. I'm using 20 pound mono. And so I'm going to retie as we're reversing. And I'm using 25 pound and have caught, I believe, more fish. I don't think it matters with when you find these hungry trout like this? Yeah, they don't care so much. Now, I think if you had 40 on, you might lose, you might not get as many, but 20 to 25, not much of a difference in the diameter. And what you'll see is even that we're using this big motor, those fish aren't gonna be totally spooked off. Like these, these are, uh, this is a very easy way to, to uh, not have to worry about the perfect approach and being super quiet. These fish are basically trained to, uh, to be used to boat traffic. This is literally, like, again, main boat ramp right there, main channel there, boats go over this every day. And uh, and we can actually troll over this too and catch a bunch of fish, surely. So oh, this ooh. isn't, oh, Joe just had one while the while the motor's still on. Here we go. There, he's on. <laughs> so he's on Trizzle. while the- TOD, on demand. While the motor is going, so I just shut it off. That Slam Shitty 2.0, doing its deed. Little small guy. I love this paddle tail. Look at the colors on that. Just such a beautiful fish. Hmm. Get him back in there. Yeah, so that was why Luke was backing down with a big motor. Still hits. And what I found, because uh, we've taken people out here before that struggled, and start, if you're not getting bites, change up your retrieve. Maybe put a heavier or lighter jig head on. There goes another yeah, one. Most of the time it's people going too fast. Yeah. Or you need to, you need to get that. Cause they're not, they're not hitting top water here. Yeah. Um, and so the last time we had someone here that we, I was watching them. I was like, just slow it down a little bit. Maybe do two pops. Look how I inhaled that thing. Uh, Joel, see, it looks like a, a big fat guy eating a piece of pizza, just eating the whole thing. That's, that's what they do. I, if you never saw Luke's underwater footage, we'll have to make sure to put a link to that. It is so cool when you see how these trout feed underwater. I mean, they there's no missing it. Like that one swallowed it, and, and that wasn't live bait fishing, that was me retrieving, and it still completely inhaled it. So I don't know if you guys have noticed here, but I've caught three in a row. Luke's struggling. There's yeah. not many times I get to rubbing his face like this, so I'm gonna take advantage of it. Yeah, and, and it's it's really all about depth control. So I have, I was, I didn't want to change lures, so I have a one eighth ounce jig head. Ooh, and I got a fourth, there you go. So it's like the depth control factor is incredibly important. 
So Joe's just being able to get down and spend more time right above the grass line, and he's just, and therefore he's getting more strikes. Because now I ha actually have the Slam Shady colored Power Prawn Junior on right now. Well, you don't you don't have anything with a fourth on it? Uh, well, I have a ton of my tackle bag. I just <laughs> figured this would work. Oh boy, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. So we're getting off this. There's another grass patch right there. We're kind of floating over this one. So in a second, I might have to get the big motor down and we'll go up to the next one. See if I can't get one behind us here. See, that's the edge of it. Yeah, you can just yeah, barely make is, it out. Uh, yeah, we're 10, 10 30, middle of the day. It's hot. It's still summer. And when you have a tough day, a great way to end. Build a little confidence. Just tight lines, that's kind of my goal. Yeah, and every once in a while there'll be a surprisingly big one out here. Yeah, or even a nice Spanish mackerel. I mean, those are a blast. As long as it doesn't break you off. I love Spanish mackerel. And I was never really a big fan of eating them until we went. Oh, what is oh. this? Catch real big one. Oh, oh, look at that. Dude, this is a bigger oh. fish here as long as it's not a lady fish. I don't know. Oh, real funny. <laughs> Probably smaller than the one I just got. No way, dude. Yeah, another little dink trout. Dude, yours was a complete dink. That's a, ni that's a nice one. Almost a keeper. Maybe in Louisiana. No offense to you, Louisiana. You guys got a lot of trout. Whoa. Oh, I'm trying to help you out, bud. Trying to help you out. I mean, look at that. It's so crazy how they inhaled this that sucker. And no telling how many are down there. Yeah, can you only imagine how many fish are actually down there? Probably a billion. And the channel is just the natural place for them to go to. This is. Uh, I can, I can, we have a lot of people who talk about getting skunked like you know two or three trips in a row. And this is the strategy you need to use to guarantee that there's no skunk trips. You know, yeah. like if they've just spend, I'll say, you know, 30 minutes, try three spots for 10 minutes each, one of those spots is gonna have some fish. Just needs to be near a main channel with good current flow and structure on the bottom. If you're in an area without seagrass, oysters is great too. Just any kind of bottom structure that pushes up against the channel is gonna be the kind of the food highway that a lot of a lot of fish will use to to oh, easily follow me all the way up. Easily get some uh, some food. Go over there. And then the depth control thing. I mean, that's just oh, so check critical. I mentioned you can catch a little bit of everything. We even got a grouper. Grouper. Little fella. Nice. Little gag grouper. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Love the color cool, on those little cool guys. looking fish. Crazy teeth in there too. I gotta make sure to not get my fingers in there. Well, I gave a tip earlier about always having pliers on you. Yeah. yeah, this guy wasn't playing around. Let me want, get the pliers out. I got them right here. Well, got some back here. Sometimes you can only lead the horse to the water. Can't make him drink, Joe. Mm. Oh, Luke. We call him Dents in the Head Luke. <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> I can hear you talking about me. Ooh. Oh, ooh. All right, so that's three species so far. Swipe there. La ladyfish, trout, and grouper. Mm hmm. Let's see if we can get us mackerel. Go. Oh. Whoa, what was that? Oh, I don't know. I think it was a lizard fish. Sheesh. It came right up to the boat, smacked it like a largemouth bass. Speaking of that, we were looking at our community. How many bass reports, which makes sense. You get so many members, you know, who obviously don't live on the ocean and live on a lake or a pond and have access to bass fishing. That was pretty interesting. Yeah. Fourth most uh, or fifth most. It was just behind yeah. flounder. All right. So we're coming up to the end of this. Yeah, I might bump up a little bit. But a lot of times the the mackerel will kind of patrol the outside, so we're in we're in mackerel territory right now. Oh, I just had a hit. 
mackerel territory right now. So I'm doing a couple little twitches and letting it sink. And a lot of times on that drop is where the trout will come up and just pow. And you don't even really have to set the hook that hard because these trout, as you've been seeing, they hit it with serious ferociousness. Yeah, and so the ideal situation as far as the winds and the currents is to have, and we actually have an ideal situation now where we're getting blown by the wind, so the wind is going into the current. So the current flow is coming this direction, the wind is going that direction, so we're able to get long distance with our cast. Oh, dang, I just had something right there. We're able to get long, long distance with the cast, and then we're also able to retrieve the lure with the current. That's ideal. It doesn't have to be that way, it's just ideal. Well, there's so many fish out here, and um, you can be going, you can be retrieving against the current and still be catching a bunch of fish. Oh, ooh. But just if you can, try to try to pick a spot that has the, the, um, the wind going into the current. If, you're, if another, you're drifting. And another great tool to find places like this is smart fishing spots. That new 4K satellite maps, you could see this spot as clear as day. If you guys haven't seen that, we added in a new satellite map that is 4K and, and it reminds me of looking at an old school football game or any kind of sports game on an old tube TV before HD and it's like, how do we watch this? And that's what Google looks like compared to this. It is night and day. And there are some areas though where Bing or even Google has really phenomenal satellite imagery and so we've kept we now have three so we kept the other two there and uh just gives you one more little tool oh there we go as soon as it hit the water one more little tool ah oh, popped off right there oh oh got my tail that was a uh, that was a pretty big mangrove snapper actually that's that that yeah snapper yeah big big boy get around there's two of them. Came all the way to the top. There we go. Oh, so now I got no tail and still getting struck. Oh, oh did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> that was like a bill dance. That thing came out of nowhere, Joel. So fast your camera didn't even pick it up. Oh, so look at that. It looks like a little slam shady jerk shad. Works like a charm. Watch this. This little pocket here yeah when you're when you're on the maps looking for a good spot oh i just had something um look for just some sort of anomaly <laughs> in the shoreline so in this case in this case this these nuts. are these are two little little pockets of grass that are kind of off by themselves look at that slam shitty strikes that's, a, that's a little bit better one. Oh, oh yeah oh got off isn't that crazy the uh tailless Catching the biggest fish. Those are two back to back, nice sized trout. Dude, that one. There's a bunch. There's like holy smokes. seven or eight others. Yeah, with I'm it. on again. This is see, this is the 90-10 yeah. zone here, kids. This is fun. And you can see the bottom. It's uh I don't know, what five, six feet deep. Oh, whoa! The a big trout almost came in to eat the small one. Oh really? Holy did you see that, Joel? No, oh, dang. Dude, that was crazy. How big was it? Uh, a lot bigger than this one. Oh, sucker just tried to pee on me. Um, dude, that would have been epic. <laughs> like this is the kind of area where you can just, oh, oh, <laughs> you see that? What just came up and popped it? I'm just cane pulling it down here. Yeah, so yeah, as, this is this is 90 10 zone yeah, right here. Yeah, as you can see, this is the type of spot to take somebody, you know, new to lures or just new to fishing thing. One to see and right there. This is exciting for everybody. I, I, this this stuff pumps me up. Oh, that was a nicer one there. Saw us. There you are. Yep. Oh, look at that. Oh, there we are. Oh, there's Got two him. of them down there. Got, oh. All right. If you guys are listening, we are getting striked. I can see. There's like, there's like 15 of them right down yeah, here below a, us. There's a bunch. Let's see if we can. We're at the edge of this bar. Let's see if we can. Oh, I just had one swipe on mine. And I'm still tailless. Oh, there we are. Got him. Little oh, little guy. Yeah, there's, oh, 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 there's, oh. One right, there's one right with it. <laughs> what was that? That was another trout. I thought it was a grouper falling it up. 
So yeah, pretty cool. The... And this is not this like a, some special Todd. This has been a, a, a kind of a, a slow incoming to the point where the other spots we fished were just nothing was going on. We just caught some kind of some smaller trout and not a whole lot of them. And they come out here and just yeah. We, have no, a we've been getting day. beat up all day long. Our head held really low, borderline, giving up on fishing. And this is where we come to get our confidence back. And there's nothing wrong with that. Going to a place like like this. Oh, fish on. Oh. When you're near the channel, you have some waves yep. to account for. Boat's going by. Joel's having to hold on. Another tree is out. I've lost count now, but it's a bunch. And that's all tailless, so I'm doing this without the tail. You don't have to have the paddle tail. Oh, I just lost one. In some cases, tailless. Yeah, so I'm, I'm using a tailless Power Prawn Junior. Oh. And so you don't have to have the right, the secret lure. This kind of fish, you can just get out and find the right spot. And as long as you're getting the right depth, I've started doing better once I just slow down. Joe has a heavier jig that he can get down quicker. But it's really about just getting a, a some some lure that has some movement, some like quick darting movement, and get it down near the top of the grass, and you're going to be hooking onto some fish. <laughs> and so, Luke just mentioned that just slowing down, so I just let mine hit the bottom that time, and it, there it is, double, double trouble. Mine, as soon as I was on the bottom, mine is not big. Uh, you might have set the record for the smallest <laughs> one. This you might have a, a pinfish come eat that. Whoop! Mine just got off there at the boat. That's fine. So yeah, we're getting off the fly. We might as well. We might as well close it. I feel like we've. Oh, we'll do one more out there. Oh, we got kayakers coming up. Whoop, whoop, already on. As soon as it hit the bottom. <laughs> oh, it just popped off. All right, now I got All right guys. Well, um, yeah, we will close it here once again. Check out Smart Fishing Spots. You can find spots like this. They they stand out like a sore thumb with that new 4K satellite, and that is something like. There's other companies that are charging hundreds and hundreds of dollars just for each area to have that same 4K. And of course, we have the underwater 3D, we have the smart fishing spots, we have the smart fishing tides. The list goes on and on and, and on. And, and on. the lessons to go with it, as far yeah. as just the, how to put yourself in the right spot at the right time. The, the software does a lot of it for you, but we still have courses that if you really want to go to the next level uh, to actually know yourself on, on how to predict where the fish are going to be, we have all that for you. Yep. And then, of course, the discounts, right, on all your tackle. 20, sometimes 30 right now. We'll get some thing we're doing 40% off of Power Pond. Your first one, I saw that here yep. recently. Our team went nuts and uh, just trying to get everyone to try the Power Pond. So uh, that's all special deals for our members. But all day long, 24 7, 365, we've got the discounts uh, for our members. And uh, we have some members, you know, save literally five, six hundred dollars a year. Those are the big spenders. And uh, but our, our goal is that you will save time by being in the right spot at the right time and save money on your tackle enough to more than pay for the cost of the membership. And if you don't, then you don't pay. It's that simple. We treat you like we wish all companies treated uh, treated us. So come join us at saltstrong.com and the smart fishing spots, that whole software, the entire tool is completely complimentary to our members. So you get that as a, as a, as a free bonus, if you will. Yep. So that's it guys, appreciate you big time. And if you have any questions on finding similar types of spots in your area, then let us know. Uh, if you're not a member, we're not gonna reply to you. Uh, I'm just kidding, we'll, we'll try to help you out best we can. But if you're a member, we've been over backwards for our members as our members know, that's why we have 35,000 people and most people keep renewing year after year, is uh, we love on them and we spend our time in that private insider community. So if you are a member and you're not in the community, get in there, that's where the coaches hang out, that's where we're able to give the best feedback and we're constantly in there monitoring it for questions and, and people you know, fishing in certain spots was, hey guys, like we were just there, here's where you wanna go. It, it, there's just nothing else like it out there. Yeah, and for you insider members, just scroll down below and you'll see the post trip analysis. That's where we get on the Google Maps and even even the, the, Ford, the 4K will show you exactly where we were, what worked, and we'll also show the spots that we went to earlier that were kind of a bust. That way you can make sure to look for the same good spots on your next trip when you're facing similar conditions. That's right. So we got a boat going by us here. Friendly, no, friendly people. Has friendly no people clue that we're uh, <laughs> that we're here. I guess. I guess we are going by the channel. So yeah. Definitely our fault. So, all right, guys. We appreciate you. We'll talk to you on the uh, the next one. Peace. Woo See ya.